Howdy, folks. It's David Cobb, the campaign manager for Jill Stein and Ajamu Baraka. I'm obviously not Jill Stein, but I am the campaign manager. And for those of you who have been following, you know that on the emerging Green News Network, uh, every Monday I come on uh, and basically do a live stream. Sometimes it's with uh, guests, as we are today, with Eric L. Bloss of the Progressive Independent Party. Uh, to talk about Occupy Inauguration. Sometimes it's just to solicit your questions. We're going to do a little bit of both today. Uh, and uh, as we start 2017, we've decided to do an hour early. Uh, so, Eric Al, I want to acknowledge publicly that, uh, that, I, that I put you on the spot because I had originally told you that we would be at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, which was our old time. So it's totally my bad and my apologies. I do want to say before we even get going, folks, to entice you all to stay to the end, we are going to be announcing a contest to be interviewed live during the Green News Network's uh, uh, inaugurate this, Occupy Inauguration, uh, seven-hour live online event on January uh, 21st uh, that uh, an online event that will educate, empower, and inspire you to organize and take bow power back from the bigoted elites with the support of longtime radical social movement organizers. That's going to be on January 21st. Super excited about that. But you have to stay tuned to the very end because we're going to be asking a specific question um, of Eric Hell. Uh, or that will be solicited from this very conversation. So you have to stay. So uh, Eric Hal Bloss of the Progressive Independent Party, welcome uh, to the Green News Network. Hi, David. Thanks for asking me to come on tonight. And yeah, you took me by surprise, but uh, <laughs> I leave it to you to always uh, surprise me. Well, <laughs> I, like, I don't mind normally surprising people, but I, I hate to put them on the spot, which is what I feel like I did with you. So I do really want to apologize. So Eric Hal, where are you right now? Well, I live in Indiana, South in Bend, Indiana. Indiana. So, right. so in the Erica middle of the country. Uh, a Hoosier, but she travels all over the country. Uh, so Erica, I want you to share with us a little bit about the Progressive Independent Party. What is that? Well, it's a growing movement calling for the a left, the progressives, to unite under one umbrella. It started when I wrote a petition back in March uh, asking uh, Jill Stein, Dr. Jill Stein, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, the Democratic Socialists, and the Progressive Democrats to join in creating a new progressive independent party. And the p petition just resonated with people at the time, and it just took off. And we launched it, and we've uh, changed the concept over time. At first, we thought we would ask all the smaller parties on the left to unite. And as we progressed, we noticed that People love their political affiliations. They're very strongly woven into their identity. And so we um, redesigned it and we're asking folks to consider uh, an umbrella organization that everyone can keep their own political identity. And But we work together for uh, resources, state ballot access, and uh, to insert uh, many parties into our two-party system. Well, that's interesting. So it, do you anticipate the Progressive Independent Party becoming a new political party, something else, working with? I mean, help me understand, because this seems a little uh, different than what I usually think about when I think about alternative political parties or political parties at all. Yeah, it, it's more like a parliamentary idea where we un unite to get electoral power for the 99 percent. And I think that this country is ready to have a, a party wide open and we love the greens and we know uh but we also love the socialist alternatives and those that are independent and so we're encouraging uh, a a broader platform to encompass all of us so that we can uh get together get electoral power for the issues we can agree on and there are some issues we can all agree on um so we're in process we're in, engaged in organizing occupy inauguration and we're going to be asking those questions of yourself and Dr. Jill Stein and uh, Shama Sawant, who's wonderful. And we want to know how you feel and what, what can we do together. So it's interesting because I do want to let folks know who, who are, are tuning in to the uh, J Dr. Jill Stein live stream and the Green News Network, which is emerging. So uh, the Progressive Independent Party and Socialist Alternative and the Stein Baraka campaign 
and Real Progressives and the Equality Coalition uh, are all part of a steering committee for Occupy Inauguration. And there are literally hundreds of endorsing organizations. So I do want to sort of break down uh, the fact that the Occupy Inauguration effort will actually be on January 20th and January 21st and on January 22nd to sort of mm -hmm. break up the three different things that seem to be going on that day. Because I really want to encourage folks who are watching, if you are able to get to Washington, D.C. that weekend, you should come because it's going to be big, right? Uh, so January 20th, Friday, tell us roughly what's going on there. Well, we're going to have an amazing march. We're going to have like a pre-rally. Uh, we're going to meet up at... Sorry, this is my dog, Lucy. Uh, I, we're meeting. Lucy is very engaged with you. <laughs> so, so listen, Facebook is a cat and dog based platform. So I think you're doing good. Uh, hopefully, uh, folks will stick around. Uh, and um, uh, tell me your puppy's name again. Uh, this is Lucy. She's very codependent, so she doesn't go uh, very far from me, unfortunately. Right. So those um, of you who are paying attention, two different hints. Number one, Erica is in Indiana right now, and two, her puppy's name is Lucy. <laughs> you go, right. Erica. So tell us about Friday. Well, on Friday, we're going to have a, a pre-rally to get us all excited and get us geared up for this uh, wonderful march. We're going to meet at uh, Malcolm X, where we do hold a permit, and we're going to mark uh, march to uh, Franklin Square and we may merge with some of the other groups that are there and uh, you know we're just really excited because like you said we've got um, uh, the Stein Baraka campaign, Socialist Alternative, the Equality Coalition, uh, some various activists, uh, real progressives are all on the uh, steering committee and move to amend and so we are working on the concept of unity and that's what we wanted to do uh, when we're in Washington DC when our country is turning a corner a dark unknown corner is to show the world that we can in fact unite on what's important so I, I hope everyone does come we will have an afternoon rally uh, between two and five um, probably at Franklin Square and then we'll continue through the weekend it's going to be amazing it's going to be amazing so to be clear, folks, Friday, uh, January 20th uh, is the actual inauguration day. And so what you'll see is major uh, marches, rallies. There are other groups that are planning to protest. I mean, there's going to be a lot of activity. I'll tell you, I'd, I'd be willing to get bet a dollar to a donut. We're looking at 10 to 50,000 people there, Eric. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be huge. It's going to be bigger than we, we ever imagined. There will be, you know, folks uh, supporting Trump, of course, will be uh, counter protests uh, and us on the left. But it's going to be, uh, you know, and people will be coming early for the Women's March that's taking place on Saturday. So um, we welcome everybody to come. Um, we're all about uniting and welcoming. And we have amazing, amazing speakers and participants. And, and we're just we're just excited and honored to have those folks involved with us. And, and so to, 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 to go, that's Friday, right? Uh, yes. And then on Saturday, there's actually going to be a women's march for the folks mm -hmm. who want to continue uh, to actually march. In addition to that, the Green News Network is actually going to be having uh, our own version of a seven-hour live stream where we will be talking to Shama Sawant, but also Chris Hedges, Eric L. Bloss, uh, representatives from all of the different organizations that occupy inauguration and Eric L and, and viewers will be actually taking you to Miami, to Austin, Texas, to Los Angeles, to Seattle, uh, to Chicago, uh, to, to New York City, to Maine. Literally, uh, we are going to be uh, on day one of Trump's presidency. Uh, we'll be actually uh, working very hard to make sure multiple voices are actually coming up. And Eric, Hell, something that I'm really excited to share with you uh, and viewers and even the Green News Network folks, uh, Julie and Michael and others who don't even know this yet because I finally got through uh, to folks at um, Free Speech TV. And there is a very uh, high likelihood that they will want to cover and use some of the content that we generate there on Saturday. So we'll have not only live stream, but very uh, very likely additional platforms. Uh, mm -hmm. Mel Figueroa is talking to folks at uh, uh, Pacifica Radio. So we're talking about something that could really blow up. And that's on Saturday. And 
Before we go to some uh, questions generated uh, from the viewers, uh, I want to make sure, Eric, to give you a chance to talk about Sunday and the summit that you're planning. Yeah, I'd have to say that's my my close to my heart. It's close to Pip's message. We've been calling for a unified front, and so I'm excited that Pip, along with the Justice Party, we just got offered a co-sponsorship with the Justice Party uh, to help us plan. We will have a light social event, uh, invite only on Friday evening to build relationships with our endorsers and speakers and organizers, and then on Sunday we're going to ask them to come uh, and sit down and have. The meeting of the minds, and this will be um, the uh, Stein Baraka campaign. You know, everyone's invited. All of our amazing speakers from um, the movement for Black Lives, our folks from Standing Rocks, our you know, all the collaboration that we've done uh, will will show up on Sunday and have a real conversation about how we can unite to resist Trump and. Uh, advance the revolution moving forward and we're going to have a documentary crew there and it's just it's close to my heart and it's close to all of us at pip that we we want to see everyone working together and i can tell you by our own organization it's challenging but <laughs> when we focus on the issues we can agree on we can do it I'll tell you this, Eric. Also, we, we're going to go to uh, some Q and A from the from the audience that uh, Julie has been soliciting. She always does an amazing job. But I want uh, uh, two things. Number one, Friday, uh, protest, demonstration, marches, rally uh, during the inaugural parade. Uh, number two, uh, Saturday, continued marches of the Women March. But in addition to that, uh, this seven day continuous live stream of resistance day one of the Trump administration and also socialist alternative, the Stein Baraka campaign and the Green Party are putting together an event with Shama Sawant, uh, Jill Stein and Chris Hedges Saturday mm -hmm. evening for an indoor event. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, uh, a, uh, I guess, are you calling it a progressive summit or just the summit? Yeah, I've been calling it the Occupy Inauguration Summit. It's kind of where we Got come it. together at the end and, and say, what are we going to do next? So, and, and that's happening like around brunch. Uh, is that right? Noon? It's um, continental breakfast all through 3 p.m. So it's uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So okay. we'll, be live, we'll be live streaming and stuff. So Occupy Inauguration, folks, is going to be off the hook, off the chart. Uh, please come out. And if you can't physically come, Make sure that you're here on the Green News Network or at the Progressive Independent Party or at Occupy Inauguration. There's going to be lots of ways for you to be able to participate in beginning to build a peaceful, nonviolent revolution against Trump before he even takes office. So I do want to uh, shift gears a little bit to some specific questions that are asked. Some of them are going to be really to me, uh, Eric Hell. Some of those are to you. But I want to let you know what some of the viewers have been uh, saying. And, uh, you know, they come fast and furious, but Julie has been capturing <laughs> the juiciest ones. So uh, Cody asks, will, will Greens be running candidates in Maine for 2018 now that we have ranked choice voting? So that's an easy one, Cody. The answer is, hell yes! Right? <laughs> I mean, look, so the Greens are going to be running candidates all across uh, the country, no doubt about it. You know, that's part of the thing about having a ballot line is that you can actually run candidates. So Maine is particularly important to us because ranked choice voting in Maine is going to give us the first chance at a statewide basis to use that preferential voting system. So Eric, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask, can you in a short manner describe what ranked choice voting is and why you support it? Oh gosh. Well, we support it because it, it's closer to the popular, uh, <laughs> popular vote that's why and congratulations to maine for passing that i think we're going to be trying to pass that in every state are we david yeah we <laughs> absolutely are and good on you to turn the question right around and and great job <laughs> for answer, eric Al. so the answer is yes we'll be running candidates in maine in 2018 and we're going to be running uh, in uh, every state that we can get ballot access in and we already will be starting off with i think about 20 and then the last thing i want to say is and we're not waiting for 2018 because Greens are gearing up to run in local nonpartisan races. And I can tell you, I don't think that I'm being sort of speaking out of school, but I can tell you uh, that Greens are very interested in working uh, with other non-democratic party uh, uh, folks, maybe the Progressive Independent Party, definitely Socialist Alternative, 
uh, other folks to say, are there ways that we can unite at the ballot box and run genuine progressive candidates? So that's something that I'm hoping that we might be able to do. Well, that's so, something we should talk about. <laughs> Something tells me that might be uh, the topic of conversation on the 19th, 20th, and 21st, and 22nd. All right? Okay. So, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, lots to talk about. So Diane asks, and here we go, what democratic process? We've become an oligarchy. Erica, opine. Uh, what is the question? Why have we become an oligarchy? Yeah, I mean, uh, di you know, one of us, either me or you, uh, talked about a democratic process and they said, what democratic process, says Diane? Yes. We've become an oligarchy. I'm wondering that's true. if you can comment on that. And, and I think that that's why, uh, I think that's something we can all, that's one of the issues we can all agree on on the left, the Greens, PIP, a Justice Party, SA, is to say we want corporate money out of politics. Um, our politicians no longer represent the 99%. They no longer uh, represent the working class, and we're fighting to get money out of politics because the oligarchy is just going to keep tightening and uh, changing regulations to to favor um, to favor the corporate money, and and so it's time that we we stood up and fought against uh, as Move to Amend is doing uh, very well. Oh well, thank you, Eric. Uh, you know, I, I think it's really important to recognize we got. Five more minutes of Q&A. But I do want to say, you know, Eric Hell and I actually met at the DNC in Philly, along with uh, uh, Evan Duke and uh, several others. Uh, and uh, we started planning that back in Philly uh, in the summer. And I'll be honest, Eric Hell, I thought for sure we were going to be planning to resist Clinton and neoliberalism. I, like almost everybody looking at the polling data, totally expected Clinton uh, would be in the White House and we were going to uh, unite and fight a neoliberal agenda. Now we're having to unite and fight a neo-fascist agenda. That really mm -hmm. needs to be named. Uh, the true. other thing is our demands, though, did not change, right? And I just want right. to run through the Occupy inauguration demands that we built out together starting in the summer uh, mm -hmm. of 2017. Number one, no mass deportations. Two, stop all attacks on human rights. Three, Black Lives Matter. Four, honor treaty rights for all indigenous First Nations. Five, get money out of politics and end corporate rule with a constitutional amendment. Uh, next, health care is a human right. Next, enact the Green New Deal, which of course was Jill Stein's uh, signature campaign, uh, which included acting against climate change. A demand to free for free college education and canceling all student debt. Uh, we called for a universal right to vote ranked choice voting and automatic voter registration, ending too big to fail, ending the permanent war status, ending the surveillance state, granting immediate uh, pardons for Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, Mumia Abu-Jamal, and Leonard Pelcher, passing a $15 minimum wage. The point is, Eric Hall and viewers, we were working hard on this agenda, and I really want to point out, yeah, we're going to fight the neo-fascist agenda of Trump, but the neoliberal agenda is basically not going to get it done. So I do want to, uh, so I, I know I sort of went off a little bit on the oligarchy. Uh, Debbie asks, what is the agenda for Occupy Inauguration? Eric Hell. Well, you know what, as, as David said, we, d we uh, created these demands, which are very important. And it took us two months uh, to get everyone on the National Steering Committee to agree to every single word and the many endorsing organizations to read, agree, and add, and add. So now we have a framework moving forward. So it, it goes beyond D.C. Uh, these demands will be our outline of what we're going to fight for moving forward. And hopefully the relationships that we've built with the many organizations coming together for Oc Occupy Inauguration will hopefully give you hope that uh, the left can unite on the, at this very uh, potentially dark time. But it is creating the framework and the relationships so that we can do our work and stand up for the American people moving forward. So uh, Gary asks, hey, I've heard this word progressive thrown around for a while. Now I'm getting attacked by manic passive aggressive liberals because I won't agree with their views on Hillary and the full out corruption that the Democratic National Committee showed. Uh, I, says Gary, will not return to the Democratic Party. Then he asked this question, how can you have a progressives working in the Democratic Party with Nancy Pelosi. 
Erica, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, the the left is known for being uh, very independent and fractured, and so there is some disagreement. We hear me, I, Pip, probably uh, David Cobb, I won't speak for him, do not think the DNC can be reformed from within. You can so, me you say that. <laughs> I think we all can agree um, the DNC cannot be reformed from within, although there are some progressives working really hard to try to do that. But the fact is that we've seen the Clintons uh, for decades now only to tighten these really horrible neoliberal policies, the horrible uh, foreign policies. We've seen our folks become poorer and poorer, you know, healthcare getting more and more expensive. We, we can't go any further without facing a collapse of our nation. So we must be uh, bold and uh, be strong, unite, because we are the largest voting bloc in the United States, the progressives and the independents. So uh, I, I hope we can find a way to come together. You know, thank you, Eric Hall. I really appreciate your sort of clarity uh, and reminding us that actually progressives and independent together literally are the majority of the voters. And by the way, when you add the people who have given up on elections and are like a pox on both your houses mm -hmm. to the two major corporate political parties, it, we're actually a super majority, right? Huge. We're huge. <laughs> yeah, right? So it's, yeah. Uh, here's the thing. I'm going to now, uh, Eric, I'll invite you. I'll do some sort of, we call this the lightning round, where I'll ask a couple of uh, sh uh, questions that I hope can be shorter. They'll be all directed uh, to you. Some of them have been gleaned from the audience. Some of them one are ones that I have, right? And this is an opportunity for you to sort of, in a short, punchy way, sort of uh, share your opinion with uh, tens of thousands of people. You ready? Oh, gosh, I'll try. <laughs> okay, in a short, punchy way, Tell us what Progressive Independent Party is. Unity. Fantastic. I love it. Gene <laughs> uh, asks, are we working with popular resistance and move to amend? Yes, we are. We have been endorsed by popular resistance and move to amend is on our steering committee. You asked, uh, Eduardo asks, so what do you mean by progressive? Um, oh, gosh. How can you say that quickly? I want to say happy. I want to fighting for human rights, basic rights, and civil rights. So a great question. So now I'm going to push <laughs> you with a harder question because Eduardo asks, do you mean progressive capitalist or socialist or something else? A progressive democratic socialist, definitely. All right. So you, you're sort of taking the Bernie Sanders approach. We are Bernie, Bernie Kratz at heart. Absolutely. All right. So uh, Patricia asks, and, and uh, I don't mean to uh, trip you up, but it is a question. She says, Erikel, you were against the recount. Is election integrity something you believe we need to focus on? I, says Patricia, think it's very important. And then she puts a smiley face and she says a big hi to Lucy. Oh, so, well, It's a friendly question, but it is a hard question. <laughs> well, I'm curious how she knew I was against the recount. I think that um, I have as big a fear as, of Hillary Clinton as I do uh, Donald Trump, and I have even more concerns about the integrity of the democratic uh, election process in their primary. So maybe I felt like it didn't quite go far enough that um, perhaps we shouldn't reward um, Hillary Clinton with more votes after she obviously the DNC uh, tilted the, the primary against Bernie Sanders. How's that? Yeah, I mean, well, look, it's your answer, right? I mean, I can just tell you this as the person who managed the recount effort, I was not interested uh, in helping uh, Hillary or hurting Hillary or helping Donald or hurting Donald. We were doing it for election integrity because we had this outrageous idea that actually votes that are cast ought to be properly counted, right? Like that was what we were about. Uh, so the, the, the next question that I want to go to uh, uh, is from Heidi. And she said, hey, why wasn't Jill on the 2016 ballot? Could it be because the Green Party is wasting efforts on protests and not getting enough disenfranchised people back in the uh, voting pool. Uh, how about establish the Green Party in local government positions? Obviously, that's not to you. I took it for myself as a lightning round question to say, absolutely right. Uh, I am absolutely committed to making sure that the Green Party runs local races in 2017, local races in 2018. But I want to point something out. Greens have been running and winning local races for 20 years. It's actually national elections that give us the opportunity to build nationally in order to do the work. So I don't think it's either or, I think it's both and. So 
Here's something. Uh, Brian asked, what can we do uh, to help out on the reservations? I live on the Wind River Reservation, and from what I see here, it really looks like a third world country. Uh, what can we do? To, uh, what can e either you at PIP or the Green Party uh, do to help there? Well, I think uh, hopefully what we've learned um, through the process of uh, the movement for Black Lives and the No Dapple Standing Rock is that um, that's for us to be told. Uh, the, the groups of folks that are oppressed, they need to uh, inform us and lead those movements. So I would say you should be a good neighbor and stop in and uh, see, see what you can do uh, for, for the reservation near you. Here we go. Uh, name uh, one thing at Occupy Inauguration that you are most looking forward to. Drinks, Friday night. <laughs> What are two ways people can get involved in Occupy Inauguration? Um, join and donate. Give me three. Uh, and what's the website? Uh, OccupyInauguration.org. How clever is that, folks, that the Occupy Inauguration event is OccupyInauguration.org? <laughs> give me three reasons uh, why everyone should tune in uh, to the uh, Jill Stein Facebook page on January 21st. That's is that for me? Seven hour. That's for you, Eric L. <laughs> Because I might be interviewed, and Dr. Yeah, Jill Stein, one, no boss. <laughs> and Dr. Uh, Jill Stein, and uh, Sean Massawan, and all, uh, hopefully Chris Hedges. It's going to be the place to to watch the best uh, the best live streams. Here's uh, a question: Is the Progressive Independent Party funded by the Democratic National Committee? Matthew actually asked that question. <laughs> we're not funded. No, we're we're funded by small donations. Uh, no, we, we're just very small donations. I, I appreciate the question, though. Okay, so here it goes, folks. Here's how we're going to do this. Julie, are you standing by and ready? Julie is our senior producer. She's done amazing work. Julie, are you ready for our contest question? Because this is a chance for you, the viewers who are watching live now, not, not, not that got forwarded. So this is the incentive for you to have been watching for the whole time. Julie, are you ready? I'm watching. Julie says she's ready. So here it is. I'm going to take the first correct answer to this question. Either tell me in what state is Eric L. Bloss talking to us from now or the name of that adorable puppy that's in her lap. Either <laughs> one of those questions will uh, earn you the right, but whichever one Julie sees first. So we already know that Eric L., is with the Progressive Independent Party. She is the founder uh, and I think, uh, is it executive director or president? Mm -hmm. Executive director. Executive director of the Progressive Independent Party uh, nationwide, but she is physically talking to us from one state. It is something that I asked her not once, but twice uh, in this conversation. But just in case that was too opaque, we also talked about that <laughs> adorable puppy in her lap. And I will take you uh, to that uh so uh, we'll take either one of those answers. So, Julie, I'm looking now. Julie is typing with the miracle of Slack. The winner is Brian Jobine Lucy. Brian Jobine Lucy, make sure that you get with Julie. Uh, uh, and he got uh, he got Lucy correct, by the way. So uh, for, bonus, for bonus points, tell us what state you're talking you're talking to us from, Eric L. Indiana. Indiana. Uh, now, are you a native Hoosier yourself? Oh, absolutely. And okay. I, I, I'm a founder of the site called Indiana Sexy, so that uh, it was my happiness project. So check it out, because not all right. all, it's not all just corn in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> or cutters. So right. For, uh, for those of you who are of my generation, remember that fantastic movie, uh, Breaking Away. <laughs> you know it, don't you, Eric Hell? I, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you you got to watch it. You got to watch it. It's, it. it's a really good one. So, folks. I've been, this is David Cobb. I'm the campaign manager for the Jill Stein Ajamu Baraka presidential campaign. I have the honor of once a week coming on uh, to the Emerging Green News Network, which somebody, by the way, uh, Eric Al said, perhaps we should call it the Progressive Independent uh, uh, News Network. So uh, some people <laughs> love your language uh, a lot. Uh, we've been talking to Eric Al Bloss, who is with uh, the Progressive Independent Party, uh, and is also on the steering committee of Occupy Inauguration, which includes Progressive Independent Party, the Stein Baraka campaign, Move to Amend, Equality Coalition, uh, Real Progressives, uh, Evan Bloss, 
uh, Socialist Alternative. I think that's the steering committee. And then there are literally hundreds of endorsing organizations. Go to the website, OccupyInauguration.org, sign up, find out more. Uh, Erica, I'm going to give you a chance for your final thoughts. Hey, folks, it's time for us to stand up. So if you're not able to get to D.C., please make a solidarity event in any town you live, at any state, city building. Uh, join us. Live stream. We are the media. All right. Don't hate the corporate media. Become the people's media. Bye, Erica. Thank you so much for a fantastic Bye. conversation. Mwah. Peace, y'all.